Over the last 20 years, drip irrigation has become a much more popular method for corn growers worldwide. Using drip irrigation for corn is beneficial in many ways. Higher efficiency of water and fertilizer use. Better uniformity in water distribution, especially on plot edges. Lower pressure needed reduces energy cost. No wind influence, the system can be used at all hours of the day. No water waste on plot edges. Reduction of weed growth between crop lines. Reduction of foliar diseases. Higher yields of up to 25%, mainly due to uniformity and efficient fertilization. For good germination and seed establishment, it's best to sow just after the last winter rains. This will ensure good humid soil for the seeds to develop in and allows late installation of the drip laterals. Installing the laterals after the corn is well established will allow mechanical weeding and convenient application of agrochemicals. There are many ways to design a drip irrigated cornfield according to variety, climate conditions and the machinery used. The design is usually based on one drip lateral for two lines of crop. Drip lines are installed with an extending machine harnessed to a tractor. The drip line is secured in the beginning of the row and the tractor drives down the field, placing the drip line between the crop rows. When operated by two workers, a single tractor can install up to 30 hectares per day. Using light wall drip lines and drip tapes will require adequate machinery. This type of drip line is buried slightly to protect it from physical damage and to secure it in place, thus preventing it from moving in the wind. In small plots, manual installation is also an option. After placing the drip laterals, they are connected to the sub-main pipes. It's highly recommended to leave open the lateral ends before the first irrigation to flush out any dirt that may have entered during installation. Before operating the system, it is also important to install adequate filtration to the system head. Most drip lines require 130 micron filtration. When sowing in dry soil, germination and rooting irrigation are required. These irrigations are given in three doses of 400 cubic meters per hectare. The first dose is given after sowing for germination. The second is done four days after germination and the third dose takes place eight to 10 days later. Regular irrigation starts approximately 25 days from emergence. Irrigation is done every two to four days, according to the local climate. To determine the exact daily water quality needed, it's best to use the crop factor and evaporation data. As the crop develops, water quantities are increased until they reach a total of approximately 4,500 cubic meters per season. One of the main benefits of the drip system is highly efficient fertigation. The system is used as a carrier of soluble nutrients, providing precise and localized nutrition. Each soil type has different physical properties and nutrient content, which will influence the fertilizer quantities and form of application. For high yields, there is a minimum quantity of nutrients that must be applied. Since soluble fertilizers are costly compared to granular solid fertilizers, many growers prefer to apply most of the phosphorus and potassium as base dressing during soil preparation. This reduces the cost of those nutrients that do not have a tendency to leach. Nitrogen is more susceptible to leaching and volatization, so it is commonly applied in smaller quantities as base dressing and distributed via the system throughout the season. During the irrigation season, regular maintenance must be performed. Two things are essential. Flushing the laterals at least once a month and applying acid and chlorine at least once every season to clean the system of organic and mineral contaminants.
Before the harvest, the drip laterals and submains are collected from the field. The recoiling is done with a machine that leaves the drip line ready for use in the next season. At last, it's harvest time. <laughs>